If Battlefront was run well, we could have had all these experiences, but no, we get a tie-in once a year at Fortnite. I don't understand why they don't see, oh, hey, we could just do this ourselves and we could get all the money because it would work. This is a clip from our full episode, which you can check out on this channel or in the description. Now back to the clip. There is a gap when it comes to the video games. We had Battlefront 2015 that came out. It was a supported game. It had a new DLC pack that was dropped every three months. We had the Outer Rim DLC. Then we had the Bespin DLC. Then we had the Death Star DLC. And then Rogue One Scarif. So we had these four tie-ins. And then the game ended in late 2016. And we're like, okay, what's going to happen? Boom. There's going to be a second game comes out in 2017, that game launches to a lot of controversy. They kept on continuing, adding updates, making things better, adding more content, and then we see it get to a great spot. Like, okay, this could be the future of Star Wars games. And then a few months after that, they say, yo, bro, we're not doing Battlefront anymore. And I got really sad. <laughs> But ever since then, we've had a gap of content when it comes to online multiplayer in Star Wars. Until you look at Fortnite. <laughs> Fortnite has had more Star Wars expansions at this point, maybe than Battlefront, definitely what Battlefront two, uh, 2015 had. Mm -hmm. And it's getting to the point where it's closing in on Battlefront 2 in terms of the skins for sure yeah like they are bringing a whole lot of different experiences and i think last year around may 4th we got darth vader added to the game and added to the map where you could actually fight him you could bring lightsabers and then just recently they, they added another star wars thing yeah so they add this whole experience where mm -hmm. you could go choose your teacher between maul obi-wan and anakin. anakin anakin was definitely one of them anyway you could go and get taught in the force and learn force push pull and something else yeah, anyway, you can learn three, four things that you can use in-game Yeah. and get a lightsaber. In multiplayer. In multiplayer. And it works because yeah. Fortnite is this massive sandbox of an experience. Mm -hmm. It brings in so many different references, but they've done a really good job of tying in these experiences. Mm -hmm. And I think it just shows the lack of online multiplayer when it comes to Star Wars right now because it's such a rich location for storytelling and expansion and to give you something Thing to do that is Star Wars mm. that you get to have this growing expanse of and if you look at what the money is bringing in in terms of probably how much money they're making off of Fortnite I don't understand why they don't see oh hey we could just do this ourselves and we could get all the money uh-huh because it would work. Make a shooter. Bring in skins. Don't add loot boxes, but add a way for people to buy those skins. Mm -hmm. And then just keep on going. Look at the customization that Cal has in yeah. Jedi Survivor. Seriously. You could add all of the different ponchos. You could have all of that stuff that give you different versions of your character. Don't make it canon unless you have a campaign. And then just make the campaign canon. And boom, you're ready to rock and roll. You have a massive sandbox that's available to you. But no. Not, not right now, guys. But like, there's such an opportunity that you you can have the benefits of a single player campaign and also the strengths of a multiplayer game in Star Wars. I think the only thing that we've got right now is in, in terms of consistently updated Star Wars games that consistently add content is the mobile games. Mm -hmm. And one of those isn't even fully out yet when you look at Star Wars Hunters. <laughs> That's still and not out. Still not out. Oh my goodness. I don't even think they've talked about it really. No. It's so strange yeah. when you look at how they're, in terms of not even just us as fans, we want to see the story expanded. We want to play as our favorite characters in a multiplayer setting. We want to get this scale and experience and the consistency of like hopping on with your friends in Star Wars games mm -hmm. when it comes to a multiplayer experience. But from a business perspective, it makes so much sense because you have Galaxy of Heroes, which is racking in money. But Battlefront 2 and Battlefront 2015 brought in so much money. I think together they had about like 35 million copies sold. That's a lot of games. Mm -hmm. That's a big player base. And then they released it for free on Epic Game Store and then they released it for free on PlayStation months after they canceled it. It's like, come on guys. Like they, If they had a monetary way to support that game, they would have made bank. Mm -hmm but they didn't have the vision to bring it forward. So in your words, we're missing out just on... Bringing a constant hum of experiences and people coming back to a, a shared experience when it comes to an online game. Mm. 
Gotcha. Some of my core memories as a gamer come from playing Battlefront 2, staying up late, playing with my, my brothers and my cousins, waking up early and going to bed late, playing Battlefront. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's something that I would love to see the next generation of Star Wars gaming fans mm. to experience. 